Hello again. This uh, tutorial is going to be a discussion of different ways to uh, add some skies to an existing photograph. And uh, yes, you're not looking at Dog Waffle here, you're looking at Photoshop. This is not the latest version, I think it's uh, CS4. But uh, the idea is to, to perhaps composite different types of sky images, and these are photographs by um, Clipsy, uh, Olivier Steiger, a storm chaser. And uh, maybe you, ha you have a situation where you want to add some other skies to that, do a sort of a compositing, a composition. And so, for instance, you might have another layer here in which you want to add uh, a, a different sky. And this one actually was created in, uh, in Dog Waffle. And, and then you want to composite that, you know, blend it together. So you have a bit of this guy, you have a bit of this one. And of course, there's all sorts of different layer mixing modes that can be used with uh, different effects to that. So uh, the idea is to see now, well, how do we actually create those um, different types of skies? What, what are the different means by which we can create, uh, paint our own skies in, in Dog Waffle? And so I wanted to cover perhaps four or five different ways. Uh, one, of w one of them, of course, is kind of a, 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 what's the right way to call it? Not a cheating way, but a, a simple way, uh, which is you, you take a photograph and uh, you have a photograph of a sky and then you, you put that to work. Uh, let's say, for instance, here I have some, uh, some skies like this. Let me go a little bit, zoom in a little bit here. There, like this one here, this is a fairly high definition picture. And what I'll do is, uh, actually I loaded it inside the brush so I can store that to manage it and do other stuff with it, like, like show it much smaller. And it takes a second or two, oh, there it is. And so I could paint that, maybe give it full opacity as I'm painting it and stamp it down and you know you got a new sky at a different size, different orientation, you can rotate it and that sort of things. Um, work with it to composite, to create the sky you want. Now uh, you might even um, make it, a, whatever the blue sky is here, make that transparent. So you could go right click here on the custom brush selection tool and select some of the blue to key on. Um, and then uh, b basically be left with just the, uh, the cloud um, and and patch put that down in different ways you know composite it or add it together uh, there's there's a, a couple of other ways to work with that but I wanted to really not focus so much on that technique which is you know to to use existing uh, photos of, of uh, clouds but rather to actually do something from scratch so here's technique number one let me let me go back to this and disable the preview all right, so technique number one is to simply go to the render and ask for the sky. All right, so render sky will give you a sky. It's a, f a relatively simplistic sky, but it does have some controls that are interesting. If you need something a bit more cartoony, uh, or perhaps uh, adjust the um, the colors of the sky, there's uh, a lot of different uh, techniques you can use here to give it some some white uh, silver lining. Um, a couple of other things you might want to change is the, the scale of the clouds, um, the, the zoom factor of your view. And, and you notice it's not going all the way down here. The horizon is somewhere around here. And that's usually because we'll have something in the foreground at about this line. We can adjust that. We can shift the image around separately once it's done. Um, there's all sorts of other things we might want to do with this and including animation. If we create an animation placeholder here, let's say we, we need this to animate over 55 frames. So let's give it 60, right at 30 frames a second. That would be just a two second animation. You can go to render sky and um, say, okay, we want it like this and perhaps a little bit more on the clo uh, less on the fall off and a little bit more on that there you go and then animate that now when you animate it you can have it move in the x direction horizontally so the clouds could move sideways they can also move up or towards you and i'll do that i'll give it a little bit of a movement towards me actually a little bit more and then they can also change shapes and basically that's 
uh, the speed along the z-axis inside this fractal cloud system. So I'm going to give it like three. It's it's moving. It's changing shape faster than it's moving in this case. So what's happening now is it's rendering this, and it's not the very realistic sky yet, but this is a starting point, and you could do some other things with it to perhaps composite it against another layer of clouds at a higher elevation. Wherever you see blue here, you could make that transparent with uh, keyframing, I mean with color framing, color keying to the blue so that another image behind it will be revealed and that often will add a lot of depth to it. That will often give it uh, you know, a higher elevation layer where you see the the clouds, the cirrus clouds, uh, perhaps at a slightly red tint, and then you have the lower clouds, these guys here. And of course, you can uh, start from here to add a lot of other things, uh, such as uh, something like the uh, Mystic Vision, which uh, will allow you to put a, a sun there somewhere behind the clouds, perhaps, and and or, or somewhere where you will later add the lens flares uh, glow and indicate okay let's let's give it something like uh, something like this here but also uh, go to the dark mode uh, the scary mode so you have uh, uh, sort of a uh, dark almost the volumetric clouds cast here right and so it looks like we have some some depth to that as well and uh, let's give it a good quality. There you go. You could do that two times, and there's no reason to just do it uh, just once. You could go blur again, and uh, where was it? Uh, Mystic Vision. Do the same. Now you need to remember where you had the sun here, somewhere around there, and perhaps add some more darkness to that. And sometimes you don't want that darkness to be applied everywhere, maybe only in the upper area of the sky half. So you could uh, also add some sort of a right click here on this tool and select the uh, give it a selection fader so that uh, perhaps it's not applying uh, in the upper area or not in the bottom and you can indicate exactly where you want that filter to take effect anyway so so that's one way to um, to create a, a sky and even animate it uh, in fact uh, you know I, I, I did apply this um, <coughs> mystic vision um, lighting effect only on this one frame but if you go to the timeline uh, with how low you can actually apply that across the entire animation each frame um, that would be oh wait that's the mystic vision it's in the blur group right there mystic vision or the dark vision and there you go so that allows you to apply that same effect on the entire uh, sequence of frames and even keyframe where it is if you have a fast moving light source uh, you know, if you're showing a, a time stretch or a time uh, accelerated uh, movement here, you might have the sun go from left to right. Uh, and that's basically what that would look like. You keyframe it and then you move it somewhere else over here, keyframe it and uh, apply that. So now you have sort of a movement of these uh, shadows following tracking an imaginary sun. You can actually go and place that sun there too. And you might want to do that first, so you know exactly where to place the shadow after that. But let's say we, we grab this sun here, and at the beginning we have it uh, somewhere around here. And keep it a bit bright, there you go. Go to keyframe it, and then towards the end of the animation we notice it's moved over here and it's perhaps a little bit brighter and we might even have some change in brightness as it's disappearing behind the clouds it's dimmer and then when it comes out here uh, we might want to make it brighter right and then here it's very bright even more so there you go and then here perhaps uh, it's disappearing behind the clouds again in fact there's a small section right around here where it will briefly dim and then come back so we can do a very gradual change and go just a few frames over and make it brighter again and then go back here make it darker again and that's how you can uh, make it look as if the light was actually modulated by the brightness of uh, by, by being a uh, hidden by the sun, uh, by the uh, the clouds or other objects if you have a, a spaceship, an airplane fly or a, a bird fly in front of it. Alright, so let's go apply that. And so now we have this sun 
uh, going across and uh, here's the animation that we just created with some animated skies so um, <coughs> that's uh, sky number one let's just keep one of them as a reference um, we understand how to do that let's go image and store this image so this is one sky right this sky this technique for creating a sky and let's go clear the animation for now um, this technique for creating the sky essentially used the filter uh, render sky. Now another technique is to go to render plasma noise. With plasma noise you have um, a technique that you can use perhaps to do two, two color. There's actually a couple of other modes. This one I like a lot for space scenes to create some nebula in the back uh, of the galaxy and then put some stars on top. But the, the two-tone is probably a good one to start with. Give it something like a bright and a dark, like uh, perhaps a dark blue and soon enough you'll get some some fairly mm, usable not necessarily realistic or credible but usable uh, starting point usable uh, cloud patterns and uh, you could make them smaller you can make them bigger you can have them seamless that's a good one to use right here already and okay that let's store this image too because we will probably use this a few times in the other cloud generation techniques. Uh, one cheap way now to make this look like it's a sky over our head is to simply tilt it uh, sort of in a perspective mode so there's a filter here filter uh, transform and the 3d perspective this was one of the very first 3d ish uh, tools and uh, so we can we can move it around you don't see the seam now because it's seamless and uh, we can also rotate it uh, along the x-axis and for instance this way so here this might be more of an ocean and <laughs> this might be more of a sky above our head so uh, that's that would be one cheap way to create a sky and you can still also change it around here uh, but that's about it so okay so let's let's keep that one that's uh, sky number two let's go store this one right here store image copy sky number two number three we'll use the same initial image here but this time we'll go into a slightly different use of the 3D. Under um, Transform, we have the 3D Designer. And in part particularly in version 8 uh, is where we started adding some interesting capabilities with that, uh, meaning uh, being accelerated through the GPU. Um, we can use the colors from the swap buffer, which is uh, the nothing in there. So we'll use just the color that we have in the image. You have the amplitude. It's really a terrain generation system, but or you could use it for water too, stormy waters. But it's really something you can use also for other uh, purposes. And I'm having a little bit of a glitch on my graphics card, which is why I'm seeing all this flicker. I uh, just uploaded a new driver last night and it seems like uh, something's not working the way it used to. But uh, that shouldn't stop me from using that. And so soon enough, what I can do is uh, add some fog. This is the trick to make this look like um, like a sky. First of all, give the background sky a different color. By default, it's black. Let's give the background color something, um, I don't know, bluish, something like this, right? And then add some ground fog. So click on the ground fog here, either linear or let's go with nonlinear, and grab the high level. And what you see is that you're actually raising sort of a fog level coming from underneath and you can tighten it a little bit so that it kind of fills the valleys and it may reach that e easier if you go on linear mode so perhaps that's the way to do it um, let's go bring this one all the way back down and bring this one uh, down there too and then there you go. So bring it up to fill uh, the valleys of the mountains with fog. And then what happens is that if you flatten this, you essentially are not seeing the, the valleys anymore. Um, I mean, you don't see this, the mountains, but you still see the, the fog where it filled in. And so you can adjust how much of that cloud is opaque and how much of it is actually seen. Uh, through and you see the clouds, uh, the sky behind it. Now, eventually we will tilt this upside down, right? Uh, but perhaps for, for the time being, we can wait a little bit. We can adjust the position, we can adjust the, the zoom, um, we can adjust a couple of other things. You can tilt it sideways, uh, roll the camera, bank it rather. Uh, scale it too, if you want it to go all the way to the edge, left and right there. Scale it this way. And then also work with the light source. So we have two light sources here, and you can put one perhaps in the far left or far right, somewhere where you know you'll eventually have the sun setting uh, along the horizon. And then you have another one here, 
Uh, let's let's give it a different color. So this one, this one here that's closer to us will give it a, a bluish tint, pretty pretty intense one, and uh, make it so. And then um, the other one uh, will be kind of a reddish, or perhaps I don't know. Let's give it. Let's try this red, and we'll put this one in the front. So you you see it kind of move around here. Sometimes it helps. You still have the terrain elevation, so you also see some shadows being cast. It's actually not shadow cast, but it's just the the shady part of it. So uh, with that, you can create some interesting looking skies too. Uh, terrains, of course, <laughs> that's what it was meant for initially, but we find that we can actually also create some fancy uh, sh uh, shaded t uh, clouds with that. Still give it a little bit of depth that way. All right? okay, so let's say we also add some specularity to that and some specularity to this. Brightness change. You know, this is where you just will uh, play a little bit with it until you find it just the perfect way. Uh, sometimes you also want to add uh, some more, let's say if we reduce this here. Yeah, there's so many different ways to combine it to have different appearance, uh, different uh, results there. There's also some fog you might want to put in the distance. So what I'll do is I'll scale it this way, I'll scale it sideways, and then I'll add the distant fog. So that's this one here, fog level. So that way um, it's it's not showing me that the clear end of the terrain. It would be nice to have that tiled. We do that in Puppy Ray, and that's actually the fourth way to create a, uh, a, a usable sky that I'll be showing. But uh, here we go. Uh, got a little bit of a sort of a patchy, shady, shadowy thingy, and then we got some other colors there. Um, and, and really, it's all about just experimenting here and finding the right mix of, of color, intensity, and so on. And don't stay there. I mean, uh, once you're done with this, you're not really necessarily done yet. You can do some more color enhancement, like expand dynamic range, change the contrast. Maybe the photographic soft contrast improvement might be useful. There's a couple of filters that uh, add some great value, some, some interesting effects with that. Uh, but uh, let's let's say with this one and say we keep this one as well. So that one's uh, method number three. Let's store um, where is it? There, store image copy. There you go. And so what did we do? We had the render sky. We had uh, simply the 3D perspective. We have the 3D um, uh, designer, and now of course Poppy Ray. So I'm going to use the same image here. Assuming this one is still, yep, that's the one that was made um, seamless. And this time I will have a look at how to use that for a sky with Puppy Ray. So normally what you would do with Puppy Ray is go here to the Transform Puppy Ray and you may have just the ray traced version or the ray traced on the GPU. I'm going to use that one, it's a little bit faster. But when you do that, um, it's really using this, this as a grayscale image. It turns it to an elevation map. And so you can go and fly through that, but that's not quite what we want. We want to turn this into um, some sort of a sky. So, um, you know, you can click the more here and see the scale and scale it up. So it's, it's same similar to the 3D designer where you have uh, sort of an elevation map, but uh, you can also enable the global illumination to get uh, make sure it's not all dark there, and then you can flatten it. You can use the scale here to flatten the sky. But wait, where is the image going? Well, it's not using the colors of that sky. It's only using it as an elevation map. You can, however, make it also show the colors. So one thing I'll do is I'll, I'll get out of this and load this again here. But what I'll also do is I'll, I'll copy it into the swap buffer. So go to the image menu and say copy to the swap image, or the swap buffer. This, this image uh, is sort of the backside of the, your canvas, right? If you're not familiar with the swap buffer versus the main uh, buffer, you, you have right now nothing in there. I think uh, it's empty. If I click here, yep, it's not showing any changes. So if I swi switch to it with the lowercase j to jump, it's blank. And I can just click my uh, thumbnail here that stored it. I clear that and, and then jump back to the main buffer. Uh, you can actually do that with this shortcut up here in the upper right corner. This S is the swap back and forth. Now, in this case, I have the identical image in there. But see, you can see here the title bar that is on the main buffer. So I could call this one. Oops, wait, that's not what I wanted. Let's say I, I use the brush here and uh, not this brush. Uh, let's just use the regular default brush here. 
there you go. So this is the main buffer, I'll put an M here, and then uh, I'll switch over to the swap buffer, and there it is. So we have a swap buffer, and then I can switch back to the main buffer. These are two images, kind of similar to layers, but not exactly, and we do different things with them. Uh, one of them, uh, you can see, for instance, we can use one to composite one with the other in many different ways. Um, and that's similar to what you would do in layers too. Uh, but then there's also a displacement that we can use here. For instance, doing a, a pool displacement of one image against the other. So you can see the S is here, but the M is kind of being revealed behind it as we're doing some sort of funky uh, displacement. There's a lot of interesting textures you can create with that. So you can also show them both together and right click, uh, click on this to toggle that and right click to change the layer mixing mode here. Uh, or the, the sw uh, swap buffer mixing mode. So you could use uh, something like this to say, uh, let's do screen level blend. Uh, and, and really the idea that I want to pursue now is to use that as the colors in the sky and perhaps actually filter it a little bit and adjust the contrast. Let's go and adjust the value and give it a little bit more brightness, contrast, I don't know, something we want a little bit more openings there. Let's try this. All right, so we've got this. We're going to copy that. It is in the swap buffer. Let's go store that, um, store image copy. So this is our image uh, that we want the colors to see. And then we switch back to the main buffer. And there we'll say, oh, let's use the same, why not? So we have them both in the main and in the swap buffer. But the, the swap buffer is the image that we will see in terms of the coloring. The main buffer is the image that we'll see in terms of the elevation map. So let's now dive into Puppy Ray again. Let's go to Transform Puppy Ray GPU. And here we go. It, it remembers from last time we ran it uh, what the parameters were. So we still have the same scene. We still see the terrain exactly the same way. Uh, but this time what we'll do is we'll flatten it and lo and behold we see the colors are there indeed. So we, we do get the colors because they are in the swap buffer. Now there is by the way also a sky with this scene. This is a 3D tiling, endlessly tiling terrain generator. And so you, you can certainly use it for that <laughs> because that is its main purpose. Um, you can actually tile it endlessly. And you see that it has its own sky. Uh, you can actually pick a couple of predefined skies there and uh, s uh, some of these are skies that uh, will add also when you enable the the, s the global illumination will will give it a reddish tint for instance for the uh, for the illumination effect but the whatever image you have in the um, in the custom brush that can be used as a sky as well um, now we're not going to look at this guy we're going to create our own sky and to do that we will use the terrain and flatten it there it is perhaps add or keep a little bit don't flatten it all the way keep a little bit of shade uh, a li little bit of elevation that will give it some some shadow cast now one thing you can do with that also is use the light source mode and change the position of the light source uh, let's first bring it in closer so we have it right over there. Let's bring it all the way behind there in the far distance. Adjust the fog level so we can actually see even further. And we might bring it closer later on. But right now what I'd like to do is with the right button change the elevation of the light source until it disappears. And you can tell that the shadows are getting really long here. Right, you can actually see that pretty well here in the real in the real time preview. Uh, as you as you are adjusting the position of the light source, the shadows are getting pretty long. Best way to see that is by disabling the global illumination for a while. So the only source of light is actually from that light source. Let's give it a little bit more intensity there, and then adjust the position. So with that, even though we have almost flattened the the, uh, the terrain, we still get a little bit of shadow being cast and that will give it a bit more of uh, dynamic uh, or thick looking clouds as we use this as a cloud system. So now we can also add the global illumination to bring it back to a bluish tint here. Perhaps not too much, perhaps just a little bit. Adjust this as you see fit and uh, adjust this also and the brightness of the intensity of the light source but also the color. Right? If, you have, if you're having a red sunset, let's use a reddish tint for that uh, for that uh, light source and and then even the fog might need to change color a little bit maybe we want it more like this 
right? So this fog color, now we can bring the fog closer again so that we don't really see that bright spot down here on the ground as the sun gets really, the light source gets really close there. Let's get the fog to kind of hide that in a misty way. Um, maybe that fog color is not perfect. I don't know why I did that. Let's let's keep it kind of a bluish, but perhaps brighter. I don't know. This is where you just will experiment a little bit and find the perfect uh, touch there. And uh, you know, one thing you can do is perhaps uh, push the fog farther away, even too far. But later on, we'll blend this away. So let's do that. Let's give it high quality, uh, just to do a sort of a, a test render with a little bit better. Oh, we have a line here. That must be, maybe we're not totally seamless. Uh, maybe we have a little bit of a side effect here. So one thing we can do is, is perhaps look in a slightly different direction, but then just move the, the, the fog back over there. So let's go back to a preview mode. Yeah, there is a gap here. It seems like uh, the elevation map or something is not perfectly flat. Uh, along the edges. So uh, that's what we can perhaps do to avoid seeing that is to go to uh, moving the light source over there now. Right. Where is my light source? There it is, coming closer. Okay, and I want to bring it back to the back there. And there you go. Okay, so I see a little bit of a, a line here, so I just need to move my camera forward so that that part goes away. There you go. So that might be useful. Um, let's see if I move around, look this way. Yep, that's good. And so now what I'll do is perhaps adjust the intensity of the light a little bit more, adjust the elevation of it, make sure I still get those nice, uh, let's get the lights with more of a magenta. No, that's that's dramatic. Um, let's give it also specular highlight on the terrain. We can adjust that a little bit. Let's give it a lot, like five or six units, and then flat there, or zero comma one, something like that. So we get a bit more specular highlights if that's uh, possible. Yeah, not a whole lot showing here. All right. Um, let's say we have the shadows. We have the now, terrain elevation, we can still adjust that as needed, give it a little bit more shadow cast. And now the big magic trick is to turn it around. We want this over our head. Now, of course, we could just finish rendering this and then flip it upside down vertically. But we can also do that right here in, um, in Puppy Ray. Select the camera ro rotate mode and then use the right button in the controls here to twist it around. Right. So that, that gives you already a little bit of a, a preview of what the camera might look like or look at. Uh, and in fact, you know, if you know you're going to use this at some sort of an angle, you might maximize the available uh, view like this. Right? If you're going to do actually a final render in which the whole scene will be rotated like that, why not already do that? Uh, sometimes there's an advantage to, d to have that. All right, um, let's say we have the camera, we have the light, we have the shadows. I love these shadows long there. So let's, let's give it like this and now do the final render, final render. And once that's done, we will simply have with that our fourth way of generating a sky. Not completely finished yet. Um, what I'd like to do, let's store that just in case we mess it up, store this image. Uh, but what I'd like to do is get rid of some of that big bright, uh, shiny thing here at the bottom. So, I mean, one thing we could do is just grab a portion of the sky nearby where it's not too bright, like this part here. So I'll, I'll use the oval tool, there it is, and give myself something like this. And then I'll need to blur it. This is a very crisp uh, selection. In fact, we can show it with the overlay. There it is. Uh, I want to blur that. So let's go to selection, uh, Gaussian or box filter alpha. Box filter will actually show me a, a grayscale uh, if I want to see it like this. If a bit of, uh, let's go to, to the the other mode, which is the um, Gaussian blur, and the Gaussian blur will do the same thing, give me a, a nice selection. And now I'll just pick that up with the custom brush uh, pickup tool. Just give it enough margin to pick it all up like this. And if you store this brush, store and manage. You can see it now. You got this uh, brush here, and all transparent around it. So you can uh, 
cautiously perhaps with reduced opacity go and paint in there so let's go clear the alpha and start painting over this let's show the preview and you can see I can it's very subtle there because I have reduced uh, opacity there let's let's give it a little bit more opacity something like this or even all the way let's see what that does yeah there you go so that will be a good way to kind of patch it up and make sure we don't have too much of that really bright intense uh, uh, lighting effect we had there all right so that's a, a little touch up we just did there with a custom brush this is a nice custom brush uh, to have and reuse so I'm going to put that into my browse media under my own brushes and uh, call that something like uh, blue sky cloud touch up touch up there you go blue sky cloud touch up number one because I know I'll be doing a few more of those eventually all right so um, we have this now uh, we might also want to add a little bit more here and then eventually uh, blur blend it into the horizon a little bit better so one thing I, I would do is actually give it that uh, right click on this uh, selection fader tool I'm still on that uh, and make sure that I'm selecting just the bottom part here and now I can grab this section as a custom brush again so let's go custom brush like this have something like this pick that up and then uh, actually an oval would be better let's let's give it the oval tool or yeah that's fine let's let's give it the oval something like this and uh, let's do control click to drag this up a little bit there you go and then select and selection blur done this before let's do this again there you go and pick this up with the custom brush so let's go pick it up like so so we have the same technique we just did earlier, but this time what we'll do is actually just paint that over the um, the gradient uh, selection. So let's put that gradient selection back in there, uh, something like this. Uh, that's not it, hold on. Let's go clear the alpha and select the, m there you go, I want it from about here till about here. I want it to kind of fade to that color, okay? And one way to do that is erase to that. Um, I could go with uh, selecting that color that I have here. Let's go with the uh, magic wand there or the color picker. And uh, pick, for instance, this one. This one is too bluish. This one still has a little bit of a reddish or purple tint. So I'm going to pick that one and then right click on the erase tool and select clear selection to primary. So it erases that to the primary. Now you can do that two, three times until you've got too much of it and then perhaps you can uh, undo here interactively this is the interactive undo to just give it a little bit too much not a little bit more but not too much of it all right so we've got the uh, the sky here and some interesting looking shadow cast and certainly the shadows would indicate that the light source is somewhere around here let's go and store that let's go get rid of this so we have a uh, store image copy there it is and we can get rid of this or save it on a file uh, so we have five four different ways to create a sky now this way this way this one and this one and perhaps one thing we'd like to do to finish this is combine some of them let's say combine this one and this one or this one with this one this one here has some interesting bright uh, bright sources oh why is it not maybe this is a larger image let me go and see if I uh, creates new image or scale to fit no it is that it is that I'm not sure why what I'm seeing here um, let's go and I should be seeing this here this one works this one shows oh the image is over there oh silly me <laughs> there it is okay I wasn't I was zoomed in and I couldn't see the entire image there you go all right so we, we might want to combine this with this one Right, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll put one in the main buffer and the other one in the swap buffer. So let's put this one here into the, copy that into the swap buffer. I am still looking at the main buffer. It's now there both in the swap and in the main buffer. If I click here, it combines the two together in whatever that blending mode is. And that could be like a, a default, which is multiply. We don't do opaque layers at that level. 
but what you can do is now click this stored image and we have this one so we have the two together and when you click them you can barely see that but if you uh, add a different blend mode let's say additive it might be too bright but it's starting to show that you can see them both together screen mode that's another way and and then there's there's many others and i'll let you try there's about 25 almost 30 different layer blending modes here uh, what i'll do instead now actually is to show a, another uh, technique which is the filter combining uh, with the swap buffer right you can actually combine or composite in two different ways so if you do the blue screen that's one way to do it and you can adjust the, the amount of blue and the high filter so you can see going from one to the other or somewhere in between right so that's that's a technique that would definitely be useful to combine different images into into one um, a, another technique would be here on the filter um, combine with swap and mix them with the mix buffer you can go from one to the other extreme and really kind of see both at the same time in fact at that point you might go to increase that dynamic range perhaps increase the contrast let's go to adjust value again and you can see that that way you get to see some of the lower clouds that cast shadows and they're dark but you also still get to see the bright uh, upper area upper elevation sky and so it's, it's fabulous how you can change and mix these together to get very different sky effects. Look at that. And then, of course, for instance, if you like this one, like I do, um, I will store it because it's always good to have a quick reference coming back to it. But then I will also say, well, this could be actually an underwater scene. Uh, this could be I'm looking at the at the surface of the water. I'm underwater. I'm at the bottom of the ocean, and I will probably get rid of this uh, bright uh, sky at the bottom. But this thing here is looking up at the sky. A lot of distortion on the sun here, and I might want to add even more distortion. So let me just finish here by going quickly to the swap buffer and add something here, like this original, very original image that we had put there that we used for so many of these skies and then go back to the main buffer and so now that image that I just put there this uh, noise will be used for displacing I'm going to use the displace color twirl let's try that one and what you can see is that it adds sort of uh, distortion effects maybe not the one we're looking for so let's try another one displace just a regular displace might be it uh, it's too big this is not this is more like marble texture it's great for marble texture too to create marble textures and and similars but uh, play with that a little bit and see what else you can do the pool display might be it pool displays yeah there's a little bit of distortion you can add to that so you know if you had something uh, legible or recognizable and you didn't want it you could distort it with that right so that would give it a little bit of a distortion as if you're underwater and there's some wave patterns distorting that and uh, so last thing we needed to do is to darken the part down here so once again uh, one thing one way to do that is to create a selection fader here that goes from here to about up here and um, this part the bottom part can now be erased to black and we can do that right there select so there you go uh, so we're now underwater and uh, looking up at the sky at with the water uh, you know surface uh, above it and that does that for showing a couple of techniques to create different skies i'm going to store this one here too uh, image store there you go and of course now that we have these guys um, we'll want to use them so you know you can take this one control C to copy that switch over to Photoshop and uh, create a, a new uh, a new buffer here that will inherit the current dimensions and then just paste it right in there so that's one of them uh, oh no that wasn't that one hold on I didn't copy that let's go image uh, clipboard copy there it is copy to clipboard all right, so now I can paste it there. Uh, let's see, new, oh, it's still not taking it. I don't know why. Okay, you know what? Let me just go and start from scratch here. I'm going to simply stop here what I'm doing and start my Photoshop. There it is. 
and there you go so create a new yeah there it is now it has that image and the buffer there you go so here's one image switching back to dog waffle um, copy this one and copy this nope that did not get copied I need to use a different method here to copy that clipboard uh, copy to clipboard there you go and then that's the one so this one I can delete let's go and delete layer and now I have two two different uh, layers containing different images and so <coughs> what you can do is you can you can show one you can show the other and blend these together in different ways again tons of different blending modes to get different results the normal mode is here but you can have uh, a linear, a vivid light, a hard light, a soft light, um, many different uh, resulting effects from that depending on how you blend these together. And it all started really with uh, creating some skies um, like these in Dog Waffle and, um, and then take them over into your favorite uh, photo compositing tool and copy this to clipboard to finalize it and add one more here. And this one actually I'll, I'll drag down to the bottom, if I may. Oh, I guess I may not. <laughs> there it is. Need to be somewhere here in between. Yeah, there it is. And uh, let's go this one here at a lower resolution, uh, l lower opacity that is, and then this one here at a very low opacity too. And you see now how we have basically started to combine different layers all together. And all right, so thanks for watching, and I hope that this will be useful for you to explore creating new skies as well and adding more pizzazz to those uh, 3D scenes and rendered and painted, the painted scenes as well as you're exploring, perhaps adding a final touch here with the lens flare. Let's get this guy a chance here. Get this guy a try. There you go. Thanks for watching.